So I've got a bit of a confession to make. When I saw Interstellar in 2014, there were maybe 10, 15 other people in the theater. I sat three or four rows back, and I'm not going to lie to you guys, I cried like the entire time. And when I watched Interstellar a few weeks ago, I also cried the entire time. If I cry during this review, you know exactly who to blame. Christopher Nolan. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Before we get started, click on that red subscribe button right down there and the notification bell. That way you know whenever I post a new video. Just so you know, spoiler warning. At an unspecified date in the near future, the planet's population is plummeting due to a widespread famine. An unstoppable plant disease called blight is attacking and destroying crops, creating massive food shortages. In addition to the food problems, huge dust storms sweep across the Midwest, forcing everyone indoors and further contributing to humanity's decline. In our public schools, they teach that the moon landing was fake to increase NASA's budget. In reality, NASA is still very much alive and is making discreet plans to launch a massive station into space, shove it into a wormhole that opened up near Saturn, and find a new habitable planet for as many people as possible. This is the setting and setup for Interstellar, a dense, dramatic, and scientifically plausible movie that asks big questions and tries to provide big answers. While it does an outstanding job with the majority of its world building, character relationships, and plot, it does make a handful of head-scratching decisions along the way. Matthew McConaughey plays Joseph Joe Cooper, aka Coop, a former NASA pilot who lost his wife to brain cancer, and his father to two teenagers, a young boy named Tom and his even younger daughter, Murphy. After NASA was shut down, Cooper started his own farm and began harvesting corn, which is the last crop that hasn't been wiped out by the blight. When he and Murphy stumble into a top-secret NASA facility, Coop is given an impossible decision to make. Go back to some sense of normalcy on his farm and spend the rest of his life with his family, or take NASA up on their offer to have him pilot a mission into the wormhole to explore three possible destinations for the future of Earth's population. These early moments is where Interstellar establishes an amazing father-daughter relationship between Joe and Murphy. It transcends both time and space. Coop's decision to ultimately leave the planet and save humanity is absolutely grueling and forces him to abandon everyone and everything he loved. After winning the Best Actor Oscar in 2013 for Dallas Buyers Club, McConaughey gives an emotionally devastating performance and further establishes himself as one of the best actors alive. If you need further proof that he has successfully transitioned from romantic comedy goofball to serious dramatic actor, simply look at the year 2014. Yeah, Dallas Buyers Club was good, but in 2014 he did both Interstellar and the first season of True Detective. On a completely related and necessary note, if you haven't seen season one of True Detective, what are you doing? While the roles of Tom Cooper as a teenager and adult are played by Timothy Chalamet and Casey Affleck respectively, he's mostly relegated to the sidelines. He's actually so irrelevant to the story that at the end of the movie, we have absolutely zero clue what even happens to Tom. There's this side story about his son being sick and Murphy trying to help them, but it's mostly just filler. We know exactly what happens to Joe, Murphy, and almost all the other characters, but Joe's son is just thrown out with the trash. The way the character Tom is treated speaks to one of the most noticeable issues with the movie, which is that sometimes it tries to be so big and so epic that it loses focus on these important storylines. Interstellar becomes so lasered in on the big picture that it simply can't be bothered with the finer details. While Tom's character isn't the only one to be let down by the script, he's certainly one of the most noticeable examples. Young Murphy, lovingly referred to as Murph by her family, is played by Mackenzie Foy, and while she doesn't have a lot of screen time, Foy plays the part with great energy and really does a fantastic job nailing the role of a feisty, energetic teenage girl. When Coop and the crew pass by Gargantua, which is a massive black hole, Time passes very slowly due to gravity's pull, while everyone on Earth continues to age normally. After time returns to normal, Murphy is 23 years older, while only hours have passed for Joe. The adult Murphy is played by Jessica Chastain, and when Coop plays back recordings sent from his daughter, who now believes that her father has abandoned Earth altogether, it provides the most dramatic scenes of the film. Seeing Coop wrestle with his emotions as he watches his little girl grow up without him, and his son become a father, 
all while being completely unable to communicate back is really, really, really hard to watch. As our hero's steady stream of tears turn into uncontrollable sobbing, Interstellar becomes much more than just a movie about space travel or saving the human race. It becomes a personal story about loss and family. While we're on the subject of family, Anne Hathaway is Amelia Brand, a NASA scientist and daughter of Coop's former mentor, Michael Caine's John Brand. Apart from the whole saving the world thing, Amelia has her own personal reasons for going on this adventure, and her character provides a nice level-headed contrast to Coop's burning desire to eventually make his way home. Interstellar takes itself seriously, but does a nice job balancing that out with some well-needed humor in the form of a pair of AI robots named Tars and Case. Essentially a pair of modular Lego pieces, these robots speak in natural human language, and are both versatile and critical members of the crew. When it comes to pleasant surprises, Interstellar is full of them. While Tars and Case offer a welcome dose of humor, Matt Damon's shocking appearance as the villainous Dr. Mann might be the biggest surprise of all. His very real reasons for turning on the crew that rescued him make his downfall that much more tragic. Christopher Nolan has always been very vocal about making sure his films are seen on the biggest screens with the loudest speakers. And when it comes to the magic of the cinema experience, Interstellar is one of his greatest achievements. While most Hollywood movies and their directors put the actors in front of a green screen for a project like this, Nolan used digital projection techniques to do the special effects beforehand and help engross the actors in the world he's created for them. All of those special effects, from the spherical wormhole to the massive gargantua, are grounded in scientific reality and make every effort to obey the laws of physics. Nolan mainstay Hans Zimmer returns to compose the score, and much like his previous works with the director, the imposing soundtrack threatens to drown out the action on screen, but shows just the right amount of restraint. While Interstellar is my personal favorite Nolan film, I would be doing it a disservice if I didn't share my thoughts on the film's biggest flaw. This one gets so much right, but there are a few things about the ending that come very close to wrecking the entire experience. A little background. Coop and Tars pass through Gargantua's event horizon. Tars gathers the necessary quantum data to help humanity solve the gravity equation that they need to save the species while Coop finds himself in a man-made tesseract that allows him to interact with the space-time in four dimensions. After Coop communicates with the past and present versions of Murph, they're ejected into space outside of Saturn and picked up 51 years in the future. I think that's a decent explanation. Sound off down in the comments if I missed anything, which I might have. That 51-year time jump means that while Coop is still the same age, Murph is now an old woman who is near death. Father and daughter are reunited on a space station weeks later, and they have an interaction that I found to be confusing. Coop has spent all this time trying to balance saving humanity with seeing his daughter again. And when they finally meet, the conversation basically boils down to, hey dad, I'm really old now, I'm gonna die soon, no parent should watch their child die, so you can just leave. My family's with me now, so it's cool. This explanation sort of makes sense for Murph, I guess. She's clearly made peace with the fact that she would never see her father again after 74 years but I don't buy that Cooper would simply accept this and leave. The movie spent over two hours establishing very emotionally that Coop desperately wants to see his daughter again. Like 10 minutes earlier, he's screaming at his past self to stay with his daughter. His decision to leave his dying child after a short conversation seems like a massive betrayal of his character by the script, and it hasn't been long enough for Coop to make that emotional leap. For a story that seems to really understand its characters, to let them down at this point with such lazy storytelling is so disappointing. Couple this story decision with the failure to explain Tom's fate, and you've got a movie that comes so close to being perfect. While it doesn't kill the movie, and the parts that resonate still hit hard, it's enough to distract from a nearly flawless experience. Don't get me wrong, in spite of its flaws, I adore Interstellar. It's hands down my favorite film about space travel, and a fantastic movie on its own. The emotional beats will always get me, it's smart, it's fun, it takes itself seriously, and it's about so much more than simple science fiction. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. You can also like and share this video since that tells YouTube it's worth promoting. Sound off down in the comments, let me know what you think of Interstellar, and I'll see you next Wednesday at 9 a.m.